All right, welcome you to the Hash Mark Show. We're going to bring in uh, somebody that I met uh, about, I don't know, I'd say, what, about six months ago via TikTok? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the, uh, the the strength of TikTok, and his name is uh, Philly Fan. If you're not following him, go ahead and do, uh, do us a favor. Go follow him at TikTok, Philly Fan underscore 215. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Philly. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you having me, man. It was awesome. Yeah, I like, I like your whole thing, your whole setup, the, the whole vibe. It's kind of relaxed, and yeah. that's what I'm about, man. It's all about having good content. You know, and there's a lot of um, people out there that, you know, I feel view handicapping or, you know, use the evil uh, dark word of gambling out there that they don't even understand that there's a lot of folks that are, you know, I would say blue collar people out there that that smash books like yourself. I mean, it's not just these, you know, Vegas Dave guys or whatever the hell. Right. Right. Well, Obviously, the lore of that, you know, sports betting is becoming very new to a lot of states. You know, there's a lot of novices getting into this. And I think you would probably say, you know, in your early parts when you were just learning and you're like, oh, I know sports, I can go and win. And it's like you realize, you know, sports betting is a little different than knowing sports. It's way more involved. So. You know, yeah, I, I think like the the lore of the like, oh, get rich quick. And like you see the cars and the jewelry and the houses and it's like you're going to be a billionaire. And it's like, yeah, to a degree, sure, you can make a, a lot of money doing this, but you have to be really, really careful. You got to manage your bankroll. You got to be you know strategic on what you're looking for. And the point that I always make is there's not edges on every single game. You know, there might be 30 games. You're not going to find a great bet on 30 games. If you're one of those guys that has to have action on everything, it's going to be really tough. If you're able to find your spots, yeah, you can exploit and make money doing this, no doubt. How did that come about for you? Were you were you, were you in a bad spot? Were you one of those people who started off who wasn't doing it right? I mean, that's how I kind of was. I was going into it uh, really the wrong way and had to learn the hard way. How did you learn? Yeah, there was definitely some lumps taken. I mean, you know, the, the lure of the parlay and all that kind of shit. And it's like, you know, uh, yeah, that's easy. That's two. Look at those two minus 300 favorites. They're locked. Put them together. Get a nice number. Right. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I think my biggest thing was managing my bankroll correctly, because like I might win a lot. Like I might win. Go, let's say I win seven out of 10 bets, but I was like betting weird. Like I bet 100 on this game and 500 on this game. And that's the game that lost. And I get smushed. And it's like you got to learn kind of like and I'm not. I know everybody's got their own sort of game plan on how they attack things. And I'm not trying to say you shouldn't bet more on certain games if you have a better feeling about it. But I just feel like, especially for a lot of the newer guys who are just establishing a bankroll, if you can stay strategic to one or 2% of that, you will always be able to sustain. You can grow your bankroll. And if you do go through the lull, because as we know, if anybody's being a hundred percent legit about it, they will tell you there's going to be some losing involved and you can stay afloat when you get into a little bit of that. So uh, yeah, man. You mean you, got, you take your lumps, you learn. And if, if you're really serious about turning this into like an endeavor where you can make money, that's, that's a key. If it's just about having action for you, then that's a different story. Yeah. You know, there's, there's always the two types of, of, of betters. And I, and I, and I tell people all the time, you know, this is where people put a negative connectivity on, on sports gambling. You know, they come in, they, they, they buy somebody's picks, for example, they lose mm-hmm. for three days. And yeah. like, this guy's dog shit. Well, it's like, no, no yeah. you, you haven't been with this guy in in last month when he was yeah. crushing the book. Yeah. 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 You see a lot. I think a lot of people overextend and they follow too many guys. Like, I feel like if you want to if you want to trust somebody that they're putting the work in, maybe you don't have the time to do it. Find a guy or two that you truly believe in and ride him and stay with him through the through the up and the down, because it's like, OK, if you're going to ride six different handicappers. Yeah, you're going to get crushed. I mean, we're all going to have different thoughts and processes. And I, I, I just feel like that's people are just they just put themselves in bad positions doing that. And, you know, let's let's be real about it, too. Like you see now with the books where Fandle and DraftKings, all they talk about is is parlays and same game parlays yeah. and the lore bonuses, of that and bonuses. Right. Bonuses. Right. And who's the bo- I mean, the <laughs> listen, obviously, just like a lottery ticket somebody's going to buy a lottery ticket and they're going to win. Right. But you know, 99% of us are not. Right. And there's going to be the guy that puts the 25 teamer together for four bucks and wins 160,000. Yep. Mm-hmm. And why does the book, why does the book advertise that they advertise it? Cause they want every schmuck to try to replicate it. Right. And they get their money back and they build casinos and more bonuses. And I mean, it's just, you see it. And that's, this is, this is what's getting a lot of guys in trouble. I've seen it all over TikTok and social media websites where guys are getting crushed because they're just they're getting lured into this shit. 
Yeah. Every, anytime you see a star bonus, something like that, you know, mega parlay, do this and take this bet. They're literally putting parlays together for you on some of these yeah. sites. Dude, yep. right? run 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 from the woods and and and, <laughs> and, that, and that's the thing is you know you're putting out great content to let people know about this and there's a lot of young people who are just coming on to tiktok and this is a small uh space right you know it's not yep. as, as as big as i thought it was and um you know i i followed a lot i followed about one or two people and been with them for quite some time and you know they've really opened up my eyes to you know looking at the numbers versus looking at just the games this is when i first started right yeah um but it's it's shocking at once you go through it for about five years it becomes kind of repetitive i've seen this story before you know yep. this number is gonna go this way and and when yeah, people true. see that and their brains start shifting it's pretty cool to watch there's no doubt and i always i've used this word a lot and some people ask me why do i call it this I, I call it sports investing i look at it more like i'm investing than i am gambling gambling to me is yeah. throwing a fucking you know like a dart like oh yeah, yeah that's, right. that's gambling like 20 bucks i'm investing yeah, yeah right you know you're, you're finding an edge and you're exploiting it and there's a number that at some point the number doesn't make sense like a number might make really good sense like you should go over the total in a basketball game but then that number gets bet way up and then all of a sudden there's no value on the over now you might find value on the under so it's all about you know setting where your guidelines are um that's a struggle you know, and, for me that's a struggle for me in the nba finding that yeah. buyback number i mean for you what is it is it eight to ten points or does it depend on the game it actually will depend on the game and i will tell you frankly like i can think of three cases within the like the last month a couple of the losses that i had where i had extreme closing line value for people that don't understand like i got on like an example that sticks out to me is i got on the miami heat uh money line against the sixers right and then right. Harden and Embiid all got there was the whole entire bench and it went from the Sixer it went from Miami minus 118 money line to minus 400 at close and I'm like I got eight points of value here and they lost outright yep. to the so it's like as much as I know that's important and closing line value most of the time is going to get you to the right side it's it's not always fail proof no. and you know you can no. <laughs> so yeah I mean you just no. gotta you gotta realize it's not always going to be that way so uh, in your NBA strategy going into to Carter every night, it's very hard now, obviously, with live lines. You know, a lot of people these days are, are finding better lines right when the game opens. And, and they're yeah. saying to themselves, you know what, you know, Phil, what, Philly, why did I put in so much effort to this, you know, freaking right. thing when I could have just waited? And, and, and I tell people, listen, if you think the game's going to get out of reach at any time, then you wait. Yeah. If you think this is the best number you're going to get. And that's yeah. part of it, too. Absolutely. Well, you, you know, I... I like to set my own lines prior to blinds coming out. Like I look at all the, the matchups. I try to look at stuff like the Like I'll look at stuff later today for tomorrow, just to get an idea where I think now, obviously you don't know hundred percent who's going to be in and who's going to be out. Right. But I, I hypothetically speaking, if you can look at teams that have something to play for, or, you know, teams are tanking and you're like, Oh, this dude's not playing. I, I can make a line. If I set a line and I got a line minus two and it comes out, you know, minus five. And I'm like, well, you know, I got to, I start looking at that again. Um, and I think if you do that, like if you have a line that you believe is correct, you can exploit it in game, no matter how, how, how out of hand it gets. If you have a yeah. favorite that's minus five pregame and they get down 12 early and now you're catching them plus five, like why wouldn't you take that? I yeah. still think the minus five is going to catch. So I'm going to take it. Great example was the Kansas game last night, bro. I was going to say that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Right. Right. Again, was it eight plus eight at halftime? I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, I had, um, I had uh, North Carolina. I had plus seven and a half live line right when it started. Cause I didn't like right. it more. I wanted to wait, wanted to wait. My lines were really weird. They were 3.8. The lines I felt were tight. I had the under 153 and a half. That was fine, but I got real cocky second half. Thank God. Nobody in the discord saw this. I took, um, <laughs> I took North Carolina money line. Cause I really thought they were just, and it was like plus 300 plus 290. I, I pounded it, pounded it, pounded it. Cause I just wasn't going to lay minus three ten or whatever the fuck it was with Kansas. There was no way. Right. Right. And I'm sitting there and so many times I've been burned the other way where I've gone with the Kansas plus six and a half, seven and a half times. Yeah. And yep. it's fucked me. Well, last night yeah. it went the other way. I didn't have an official play on the game to anything. I, I gave okay. out a lean. I told, uh, I told people on my video on TikTok. I said, um, you know, I don't, I think Kansas wins. I don't in good faith. I'm not recognizing a minus 190 minus 200 money line. But I also don't know that they cover, right? So I'm like, if mm -hmm. I had to play this game, I'd be looking at the money line. Maybe you can get a better number in game. And then, okay. so I believe that. And then when I'm looking at halftime plus eight, I'm like, well, shit. Uh, 
this game's far from over. And I'm, if you would tell me before the game I could get Kansas plus eight, I'm taking it. So, oh, yeah, 100%. At halftime, you know, at halftime, I mean, shit, the new game line I think was 16 and a half or 15. Yeah, that's or, or no, you're right. I'm sorry. They were they were up 16. That's right. Okay. But yeah, right. right 15 or 16. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I'm I think glad like, it's over though. I hate college. I'm not a college guy. I, I prefer the pros myself. I do love the tournament and I, I do college. I do with handicap college basketball for me, the majority of it throughout the season is I'm looking at smaller schools, games that I think that the, 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 um, the typical like book odds makers, they don't really give that much shit about. I think you could find totally wrong lines if you really look into it because nobody cares about, I don't know, like um, yeah, Navy yeah. versus like, you know, yeah. whoever on a, on a Grand, Saturday. Yeah. Grand Valley, Valley State. Right. Right. Versus, yeah. You can really, yeah. you have to go searching for the lot. You know, you have to like mm-hmm. search for it on the books. Sometimes you right. can't even fund it. So, yeah, right. <laughs> but, but I think there's value in doing that. Um, with, with the NBA, it's a shit show. Cause uh, well, know. the injury reports are a joke. You don't know, you know, oh, yeah. the way that comes out. And mm-hmm. I have my whole theory behind that. I could go into a whole show about why I think that happens, but um, that, that's, that's interesting. Give us a, a high level theory. Um, well, obviously there are, you hear the people on here or a lot that think that sports are rigged, right. Or the league mm-hmm. is rigged in some degree. Right. And, right. and, yeah. um, you know, obviously the league is in bed with gambling sites now. I mean, everything that the commissioners talked about it. I go and watch a halftime of a Sixers game and they're talking about what the live line is. Like uh, you would never hear that before. No. Um, right. So I kind of feel like when, okay, if I'm just using this as an example now, but let's say, you know, LeBron is a game time decision. Anthony Davis is a game time decision. You, the, the line is sitting somewhere with them questionable, right? Then let's say they get ruled in the line chain. Like you can, by the way that the, the injury report, like a guy's ruled out, a guy's ruled in money comes in this way. Money comes in that way. They're able to sort of dictate how, how things. And then, you know, like, and, and then they don't announce a lineup, but really officially sometimes to less than an hour before a game starts. And I just feel like it's not that they're not to say that it's not rigged or is rigged, but I do feel like there's a way to manipulate how the money comes in yeah. when you're throwing these injury reports out the way that you are. And you can see it guy gets ruled questionable or is i've seen stuff where a guy is doubtful and all this money comes in and then all of a sudden it's like oh upgraded the probable oh what? yeah yep <laughs> so, it happened, it happened all the time this year with atlanta with trey young how many trey times young, yeah. doubtful and i would i would play the other way and then i'll and I, i'll write for the game and he's playing i'm like what is he doing out there <laughs> yeah yeah and that's my fault only- though you know i gotta learn that yeah i mean it's there's a there's a lot like I, there's a lot to be said for a guy like Giannis, right? Who who no matter whether he's on the injury report or not, he plays like pretty much every game. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. been a couple where he sat out, but no, normally Joker. he's in. Yeah, yeah, uh, I you know and but I do think like going back to that, I you know I'm not. I think you can make cases for sports being, I don't know, if rigs the right word, but manipulated to some degree. You've yeah. seen it's documentaries it's on it, influenced, yeah, somehow. Well, the, the 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 referee Tim Donaghy, I mean, I mean he, it, really, it really did happen, so we can't yeah. like ignore it. <laughs> right, so, like, it, it did you happen. Know, the NBA, um, it, it, every year, it, it still amazes me how you can hit a freaking total twenty two points in with like three minutes left to go with free throws. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's crazy, yeah. man. It is just crazy. But what a, I mean, it's been a good season. I feel like for a lot of uh, NBA betters. Uh, yeah. And I, I'll tell you one angle that I like, and I, you know, not a lot of people probably even look at this because I understand the natural reaction would be, Oh, well, that's going to go under, but like, if you can find a spot, this just happened the other night. I'm trying to remember the exact game. It was, okay. it was um, Pacers and I guess it doesn't really matter, but like the 95% of the guys are out on both sides. Oh, it was, it was Portland, Portland and okay. OKC. All right. Okay. Portland and OKC, I believe was the, was the matchup and you got guys are, so you're looking at like the main stars are all out. Yep. But every single one of these guys, which I will tell you, 90% of guys probably couldn't even name them. But if mm-hmm. you watch them, if you watch the league, you like you know these guys can play a little bit. And they're, they're looking for an opportunity, right? They're all G League guys or rookie guys or guys that are finally getting an opportunity. And they can score. And you see the line starts out at 232. All these guys are ruled out. It comes down to 222. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, this is going to be no defense. This is going to be a track meet. I'm taking the over like these guys yeah. and then, and it goes way over and you're like yep. Oklahoma city's ending with 123 points and you can't name three guys on the team. Yep. And, and well, I, I think that's a looking at those matchups where, where teams don't have any care. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, no, you're right. And the average better sees that as oh, nobody's going to score. This is all the starters are out. Exactly. And, it, yep. It's it a way to take advantage. With, um, Memphis Grizzlies the other night. Yeah. Believe they, they had all their starters out. They beat yep. the Suns. Chris Paul yep. in. Um, Suns don't give a shit. I mean, so. I mean, Anthony Davis, whether he plays or not, is not anywhere near right. Oh, um, dude, he got, he, he looked, he did second game back. He looked okay. I thought he got hurt early. Yeah. And he, and he was hobbling, man. That foot don't yep. look right. No, he's definitely not right. And I think he would probably admit it now that he came back sooner. But, I mean, they, they were trying to get in. I, I, I mean, I can't fault him for playing. It right. is. I give him that. But, yeah, yeah, man, I mean, that's why he's got that nickname, Street Clothes, because he just doesn't fucking play. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. So, uh, on the NBA uh, note, and talking about the West and the East, uh, real quick, who do you think is coming out of the West and the East? Uh, who do you like? What are your thoughts on the NBA playoffs coming up here? Uh, West wise, I mean, it's hard to make cases against Phoenix. They're playing phenomenal basketball. I mean, I, I just think they're so deep and they're so well-rounded and they got so many guys and Chris Paul obviously leads that and Booker's a killer hard, hard, but, but at the same time, like I look at a team like the Grizzlies and I don't know who wants to play them. That's a, that's a juggernaut team, you know, tough and team. yeah, tough team, you know, I, you know, if Denver gets, um, if Denver gets Murray and Porter back, you know, I don't know. They, they, they're formidable as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the East is tougher for me a little bit. I just think you can make, cause like realistically you, the heat might play uh, Brooklyn in the first round or whatever. I mean, you're having like, a, that could be an Eastern conference finals matchup yeah. just the same. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have yeah. them get eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, what or one of them is going to get eliminated. Um, my Sixers, for example, like I'm not hundred percent sold on them. I feel yeah. like, you know, you Obviously, like them? What, what what's your thought? You know, being in Philly, what's the vibe? You know, the Harden thing. What what's your thought? I'm not totally sure. Like, there's one of a couple of things that are happening. Either Harden has legitimately lost a little bit of a step, which is possible, mm -hmm. or he's or he's nursing that, that that hamstring and he doesn't want to go full board, or he's playing a little bit of possum and he's just trying to save it for the playoffs. I don't know which yeah. one it is yet. If Probably we get possible. James Harden of last year. Mm -hmm. If I can get that guy, then I think they got a, I got a really good shot to make some noise. If he's half the James Harden that he's been, then, and when I say that his numbers are decent, he's facilitating, but like when he does that move or he tries to get by somebody, yeah. he's not able to do it right now. And he's getting stuffed at the rim. So that, that worries me and their bench is a little lackluster. Um, but I think they're primed to get out of the first round at least. And at that point, I guess you'll see what happens, but it's hard to go against teams like the heat, the bucks that have obviously been there. And if somehow Brooklyn can get healthy, I mean, they're, they're, they can be a force to be reckoned with too. Yeah. It's tough in the East. I think, um, you know, if you're looking at Philadelphia versus Cleveland the other day, first half, yeah. I'm like, what is this Philly team? Then you watch Philly yeah. second half and Embiid is just a monster. I mean, he just, he's on a mission and yep. they, they, they look like the Philly team that nobody wants to mess with. Um, yeah. Do you think, do you think Harden, you know, what, what's your thought on Tobias Harris still? I mean, is he still a guy that everybody's fine with here with this Harden thing or what? Tobias Harris, I, I can appreciate his professionalism. He never really says anything. He goes out there. He does play hard. I don't, you know, I think people come down on him because he's a max contract player. They paid him, which you're not going to say no to the money. It's not his fault, but right. I don't know that he's ever going to live up to that. I mean, he's not that he's not a max contract guy. He's no. a nice third third piece. Um, right. And when he's on, when he's hitting his shots, the dude is a really good player. But the problem is he's been rather inconsistent. And I can't – I don't think he can't figure out his role because he's been asked to play like five or six different roles over the last couple of seasons. He was the number two guy. Now he's the number three guy. Then I was like, do we put him off the bench or what do we want him to – so I think he's like – I think he's a little lost to be honest with you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not a, I'm not a great fan. Uh, Ci loves Tobias Harris. I do think he's lost, like you said, trying to fit in here. Doc Rivers, though, I like Doc Rivers. What's the feel there uh, with everybody for Doc? You guys like him? I think, or no? uh, <laughs> um, I gotta be, I gotta say, when he first came in, um, because of the position that they were in last year, I was kind of all for it because this is a guy that has a pedigree. I mean, he's, I'm not saying he's not a good coach. He's won a title, obviously. Right. Um, but. I think people are looking at his resume of blowing a lot of big games and being up three to one and not finishing it, oh. having really good teams. Like look at some of the guys he has had Paul yeah. George, Kawhi Leonard, yeah. you know, uh, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, like go down the list of guys that this guy has had and you probably should win. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's a, it's a little hot and cold here. I think there's guys that don't like him. I think there's guys that think if he gets bounced in the first round or even the second round that he should be fired. Um 
but I, you know, I don't know. It's, I feel like sometimes his in-game adjustments are weak. Like there's like the other night they played the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Okay. They were up, I don't know, 12 or 13 points in that game going into the fourth quarter. I think they were up 14 going into the fourth. They put Harden and Embiid on the bench at the same time. Giannis goes on a 17-0 run himself without the starters on the floor. And it's like, at what point, like what? So even Embiid said at the end of the game, he's like, why wouldn't you match minutes there? If right. you got your starters, star mm-hmm. saying that, like, mm-hmm. that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, how do you let that, and not call a timeout either. Like, how about stop this shit? What are we doing? Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot of timeouts on on big runs or drives. I feel like they just let Embiid roll with it, which is fine. But, yeah. I, I mean, listen, I think it's, it for me, and how it pans out, it's it's Milwaukee, Philly, yeah, Brooklyn. Miami. I mean, it, 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 yeah, Miami. I mean, this is going to be a tough out. I mean, the yeah. Bulls are trash. Yeah. Um, so, Cavaliers probably. I mean, you know, I, Raptors. Yeah, but you know the Raptors are tough too. They're, I mean, they're going to make some noise. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're long. They can run. They yep. can run. They got a lot of length. And they got a lot of guys that are like interchangeable. They do a lot of similar things. I don't know that they're good enough to win a title, but I could also tell yeah. you, I think, I think they give somebody a run for their money in a, in, a, in any series they play for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NBA playoffs are always fun. Um, we also have. Uh, the Masters coming up. Do you do anything for golf? The Masters? Do you give a shit? Do you not golf? What's your take on that? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I pr- I can appreciate golf. I do. I think it's incredible. I don't really play it. I've gone a few times in my life, and I, you know, I I pride I pride myself on being pretty athletic. And anytime I go on a golf course, it's I feel like I've never played a sport in my life. So that's awesome. Um, Good for you. I fucking yeah. Love it. <laughs> no, I, I will I will I will happily listen to anybody that's, that's got awesome. a golf pick. But yeah, uh, you yeah, don't want, you sure. don't want me. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, – it, it's amazing how there are people who, who do these – a lot of these matchup plays in golf, and it's like – Yeah, I, yep. I've been playing some of these lately, and, and they've been winning, and it's it's kind of uh, intense. And then I got uh, carried away with it, so I started doing hole-by-hole hole gambling. It had to stop that. That got out of control <laughs> really quick. Um, but it was fun, you know, very entertaining. So, uh, I, I could see that. I could think if you had some money on it, I could see how I would be. I, uh, I just, I don't know enough about it to even be able to give an opinion. I know Tiger Woods is going to try to play, yeah, uh, which I is. guess is good for the sport, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is. Yeah. He's going to try and play. He's a plus, uh, I think currently plus, uh, 5,500 to win the tournament. Ooh, I mean, you know, wow. that's good for, uh, uh, putting a little bit on. Yeah. You know? So absolutely the Tiger Woods. He's got a he's got a big name, you know. NBA, NFL, MLB, yeah. college basketball, college football. I mean, for a while when 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 I was with well, uh not that when I was with, I still do a lot of stuff for uh was a company called Sports Gambling Daily. We they had a few more cappers, and I used to get a little bit more involved with NHL too. I haven't done as much as that recently. And yeah. then when sports was completely over with, I was fucking with KBO, which was which was actually awesome. Wow. Okay. Could, could could not pronounce the names, but baseball yeah. is baseball, and numbers are numbers. What, and that, that's what I was going to say with baseball coming up here um, this season. What's some advice for new baseball betters? Um, you know, what's what's yeah. what's kind of your way to approach baseball? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a baseball guy, so that's kind of okay. so. I, I like baseball for a few reasons, but I will tell you that's one sport. I like with any. I feel like you need to have some data points before you really start like putting your toe in. Um, I mean, I'm not saying you can't bet on a game or like sprinkle right. or whatever, but yeah. like, what do we really know early on? What the hell? Do you, what can you tell from game two of a 162 game season? I, I like to know a little bit of something uh, yeah. before I really, really dive way in. But one of the reasons I like baseball so much is because there's so many angles to attack. Like you can look at first five, first five inning plays right and what's great about a first five inning play you take the shitty bullpens out of it now you're just dealing with starters you also get the push option where if it's tied at the end of the first five innings you you get your money back sorry somebody is the book you call him god the book you're you're fine take your time (laughs) fucking book i'll leave that go um uh what do you call it so um I th- so like there's that I, I like looking at team totals you know over for some of these teams that can bash bash you know like the Phillies for example look at that lineup Castellanos yeah. Harper Hoskins Real Muto are, are, at- are a lot are a lot of those numbers uh light early in the year you think the, yeah. the team totals are lighter because they don't know what they're going to get I think there's that I mean I think a team like the Phillies maybe which has a perception of being a team like that would bash or like the Yankees have that perception of bashing you'll yeah. see a lot of times team total overs might set at four and a half which means you got to get the five but if you look at like if you look at a team like um 
let's say that's playing against the Phillies. Let's say it's uh, let's say it's the Braves, for example, right? Well, like last year, I would take team totals over against the Phillies all the time because their bullpen was fucking terrible. So it's they, give, they give it like eight in the seventh, right? That that is correct. So if like the starters gave up three and my team total is four and a half, and now I know the bullpen's coming in, like I could go to sleep and know that's going to cash. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's just a lot of angles to attack, and, and if you're smart about it, I think baseball is an absolute money maker. Um, but I can understand why people can get killed in that sport too if you don't really know what you're looking for. It's a long season, man. Really it is. Long season. I I, it refer, is. I refer to that as my off season. I don't play it. <laughs> uh, if I go to a game, and we've got more exposure now to baseball people, so I don't want to say I'm not going to play it. I think this sure. year I might play a, a, a lot more. But um, notoriously, the NBA playoffs is the number one for me personally. I just feel it's so predict. You know, it, the, the storylines, yep. the 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 public money you know it all just adds up I agree the o- the only th- i mean well this, you know this the only thing that that makes the playoffs tough is those lines are super super sharp yeah, I mean, they, yeah you, you're you've, right got, you've got to find you know obviously everyone has their own thing i like yep. to try and find the script if there is one yeah you know but it's, it's for- tough, man this year's fucking weird with with brooklyn the way they are and even the clippers where they're at with possibility even though you know Kawhi leonard coming back i don't know who knows but still this is crazy well you know that's a team that we didn't talk about about coming out of the west and i'm not but i they are interesting because with paul george coming back and I, you're right quite don't know but they're pretty frigging deep too. Like they're nobody at all is talking about them and he does change them somewhat. You know, Reggie Jackson is a legit player. Mm-hmm. Paul George is obviously a legit player. Marcus Morris can, can score. I mean, you know, the, the Zubox is a good player. Like they got guys that can play on that team. So I'm yeah. not saying they're winning a title, but nobody's talking about them at all. A lot of people on the Pelicans on Sunday night, uh, obviously LA taking care of damage there. 15, I think it was, I mean, it's just a murder. Um, Every, yeah. I mean, you know, anytime I, I, what I'm beginning to see with uh, our cappers is anytime we get a consensus, go the other fucking way. That's <laughs> We've had two yeah. consensus picks and it's been a disaster so far. So I don't know if I like consensus. Yeah, I, I hear you. There's something to be said about that. I don't disagree. I, I, you know, when you see a bunch of guys on the same side, you're like, uh oh. But, um, well, to your Pelicans point, um, so, you know, reading some articles and I like to look at like when I'm capping games for NBA specifically, I like to go, I follow like every beat reporter I could possibly follow on mm-hmm. Twitter. Uh, yeah. Because you get, you can find information before it's released. Sometimes they speak in between the lines a little bit where you can make like a guy wasn't at shoot around. Well, why wasn't a guy at shoot around? Okay. Is he getting treatment or like what's going on? So like there's things you can, and I think that's helpful, but uh, where I was going with that was, you know, talking about how they got crushed by the Clippers they were on a high. They were playing really, really good. They were kind of smelling themselves. Brandon Ingram comes out and says something like, um, you know, we needed to get slapped in the face like that. You know, we're, 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 gonna re, we're, re, we're refocused, we're re-energized, and we're going we're gonna to play these games like it's playoff. Well, they get, the, they get the Kings tonight, right? The Kings aren't trying to win, and the Pelicans got everything to play for. So, yeah, I look at it like first quarter, like minus two and a half Pelicans. I mean, I can see them coming out and trying to lay the wood on them. Oh. So, like – Oh yeah, you, know, you try to find a spot like that where there's some motivation. I think that's Kings, ugh, Kings flat too. And that last game out for the Kings was hard to watch. Um, yeah, against the but, Warriors, I believe in Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, they got some P. Like I like you know, while they're not playing, a Sabonis is not playing, Fox is not playing. I yeah. like Davion Mitchell, but he's like their best player right now, and yeah. he's not carrying you really. Um, no. Harrison Barnes is nice, and I'm not saying that somebody can't go off tonight, and it's not possible the Pelicans it's lose. Happening. Obviously, anything can happen, but. If you look at why the Kings aren't trying to win games, they're just not. Yeah, and Pell's Pell's in a great spot. What's that Pell's number? In a great now? Spot. What's that number? What's, right now? Well, the quarter, the first quarter was two and a half. Okay, first quarter. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I think first quarter you can look at first half minus four. I mean, I feel like those are two really good spots. Now, yeah. when you get to minus eight full game, yeah, it's I still lean them. I lean them as well on that. But like, mm-hmm. then you're talking about maybe getting backdoored. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. You don't want to push right. it there. But I think, you know, I, for me, it's all like I, my, I'm a situational capper with the NBA. It's about trying to find um, motivational areas, fatigue spots. You know, a guy, a team has been on the road four out of the last six. They're at the end of a road trip going up against a team that's been three games on a, at home on a homestand. I mean, you find games like that. Um, 
the team, you know, scenarios where a team comes home for one game and then they're back on the road for two more after they were just on the road previously to that. Like there's always weird uh, scheduling spots that you can find really big angles that I feel, you know, because yeah. there's, there is a, no matter how shitty the team is in the NBA, there's always a spot to fight, to ride them. And no matter how good a team is, there's always a spot to fade them. So, you yeah. know, it just, that's all I, yeah, that's the way I'm always looking for the edge. You know, and again, going back to your point earlier, every team has professionals on it. NBA, they're all the same. So there's a good opportunity that these guys, like you said, want to play. And it's it's yep. one of the harder times of the year at the end of the year for some, but also one of the easier times to cap for some. So you, it's you I, just no. I agree. And I think like, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but looking at teams like Oklahoma City, right? I talk, mm-hmm. I go back to them. You can find spots with them. The other night against the Phoenix Suns, um, I took um, Oklahoma City's team total over 103 and a half, I think it was, because they sat mostly everybody. Jay Crowder was out, That's Booker a low was number. out, you know. Yeah. And I'm looking at now, now Oklahoma City, this is their this is their fucking championship game for the for the season, right? They're gonna yeah. go up against Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So you got these yeah. young guys, yep, all of them trying to show their worth. And if you look at them, they were all good college players and they were all good college scorers. You just can't name them like Pokachevsky. Right. Trey Mann and Isaiah Roby and, and, and Robinson Earl, who played for Villanova, like these are good players. And they went out and scored what 124 and beat them. So, yep, I just feel like those teams are undervalued. Nobody's looking at that. Nobody gives right. a shit about the Thunder. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I'm, no, I'm, it, I'm saying yeah. that because I feel like that's something that some of yeah. the guys out there that can look yeah. at. That. Yeah, I mean, in the Thunder earlier in the season, we're covering machines, and at the time, Sacramento were covering machines, but again, we're talking, you know early uh, three, four months into the season when these teams were really pushing hard to make that kind of, you know, playoff yep. push to get them saved up there. So it's a totally different season, you know? So you bring up a good point there. It's it, There's a fine line between a team, like an organization wanting to lose. Like, let, let, let me ask you this. Like, so, uh, so we know that OKC really doesn't need to win games. It's probably better if they don't. But like right. when you have your young guys out there that are trying to show their worth and trying to show whether it's for this team or for somebody else in the NBA, Mm-hmm. how are you going to tell them like go out and do shitty like they're not no. gonna no. right no so the, no. the best thing you can do is sit your starters and put these guys in and be like all right well you know maybe they won't come through but like if i'm that guy and i'm getting 35 minutes when i wouldn't normally get these minutes i'm going out and balling the fuck out really yeah yeah, yeah. War, warriors uh kings again going back to the game perfect example of that where the warriors had basically their whole bench in there i mean dream and there's another guy Draymond Green again. He he played the first quarter, and that was just yeah. the whole night. So another opportunity there for people to nail his under the <clears throat> under numbers. I didn't do it though, but you just don't know. Yeah, you don't. I mean, and and I know that teams are going to be a little bit more careful. Like I was a little surprised that that Harden nor Embiid showed up on the on the injury report at all today. I figured at some point they would yeah, be right? questionable, right? The only reason right? that I can think of is that that they're playing is because this is a night for MB to go ape shit and, and try to pad for the MVP. MVP, he, yeah. He's got nobody that can stop him on, on, on the Pacers. He should oh. have a fucking field day. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. if he gets hurt, it's kind of like, why was he in this game? <laughs> That's the thing. That's what I told uh, I was talking to Knotts about the uh, uh, Joker. I said, yo, bro, I don't know why he's playing. And, and then they keep telling me, they're like, listen, He's playing for the MVP, but does rest really matter to a guy like that? Who's, you know, Chris was talking about it, a hard, a hardcore blue collar guy. They're like, yo, I don't need fucking rest. Yeah. Go out there and do what I do. Yeah. I think, um, well, it's twofold. Like, you know, you come from an era, you watch basketball back in the nineties where like, you know, nobody ever rested at all. Right. So like, but nobody was getting hurt either. You know, so it's fucking weird. You know? or you, well, that's true. I, I think part of it is this. And I get it to a degree as a fan of the sport. And like, I think it waters it down. And obviously for somebody who likes to wager, it makes it more difficult. But I think part of it is like, when you have $200 million invested into a player, yeah. like you want to make sure he's going to be able to play. Like you want to get multiple seasons out of the guy, right? Not run his ass into the ground. So I, I kind of get it from an organizational standpoint. And let's be honest, it's better for the player. The longer he plays, the more money he's going to make. So I get it to that degree. But yeah. I, so the, the NBA needs to do one of two things then. Because I don't think you can say to a team, well, we're finding you if you don't play your guy. Because you can't tell me, if a guy says he's injured, you can't tell me he's not. I mean, so I'll, right. I'll ride with that. But unless the NBA cuts the games back 
and goes to like a 60 game schedule and says there's no back to backs anymore, I think you're going to just continuously get it. I, how else do you how else do you rectify? It? And I know the commissioner said, well, he was going to put his foot down and stop this shit. How? How yeah, do you stop you it? You can't. And, and, and for fans who want to see these people playing in these states, I mean, you just got to go when you're playing. I mean, it, it's just the day it is now. It's well, that's not, true. I, you almost can't make plans in advance. You got to no. like, no. Yeah. I got tickets for, um, I got tickets for the uh, Sixers uh, Raptors game uh, about a you, week or so ago. Just and I, game, right. Yeah, I was right. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I picked that game because I was like, all right, that's a national television game. That's Embiid going through MVP. Like they're not going to sit anybody on that game. Mm-hmm. Like that, that, that was my thought. But then I'm like, and then I realized, oh shit, they play Miami the next night. It's a back to back spot. So like now I'm freaking out. I but I bought these tickets. I got really good seats and the fucking dudes. So the whole day I'm waiting for the injury report. And I'm waiting for them to be told they're not playing. And they did play. And I was like, all right, yep. cool. But they got smoked. It almost would have been mm-hmm. better if they probably yeah. didn't play. Right. Then right. the next game, they sit them out against Miami, and that's the game that Miami. Uh, that's again the Sixers beat Miami with their fucking bench. Unbelievable. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my, but I feel so like I feel bad because I was talking to a dude who's like, I bought my my parents got me tickets at Christmas time behind the Sixers bench. I can't even uh, imagine what those tickets uh, cost. And the guys don't play. Uh no, so, it's unbelievable. It yeah, really is. I was <clears throat> I was in Milwaukee and uh Giannis didn't play when I was there. I was pissed. But he always plays. That's even that's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I know. I think he was sick or something. I don't know. You know the chances. Of, I, that's why I say I say that about Giannis. You could probably blindly pick any game for the Bucks, and he typically plays. The fact that you picked the one that he did. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was, uh, <laughs> and I, I was with a I was with a, a client too, and it was his season tickets, and um, it was never like you know announced. He just last minute he was sick, and it was just uh, <laughs> that's yeah, that's rough. But I got to see everybody else, you know. That's a good team. I mean, yeah, they're fun. Um, yeah. So that, that's um, uh, is that your is that your team? The Bucks or no, no. So Bulls, Bulls, yeah, in the Chicago yeah. area. So the Bulls, right. but you know, just north, ninety miles north. So we go up yep. there quite a bit. Um, you know, um, real quick on the Bulls, there's not much to say. Uh, we need ball <laughs> back. We need ball back. The, without the point guard situation, it's so tough for them, and they're just, yep. uh, you know, Patrick. Uh, Peterson, not Peterson. Um, I'm drawing a blank with his name, but um, young guy, I can't fucking remember his name. Patrick. Uh, Patrick. Is, yeah, I forget his name. He's out of Florida State. Um, Patterson. No. Well, I can't. I can't believe I can't even. Th- I, I'm uh, man. That makes me mad. I know like everybody. I know the whole entire all the teams. Shit. Patrick. Um, not Williams. What the fuck's his name? Yeah, no, it is Williams. Pat Williams. Hey, Williams. Okay. Yeah. He he needs to. Uh, <clears throat> And I think this will happen hopefully soon. He needs to man up and, and just do more. He's not doing enough. He's he's he looks a little afraid. And I don't know what's up with Levine and it's the Rosen, you know, who uh, taking the last shot. It's just it's fucked up right now. It's not right. Yeah, L- L- Levine. I mean, I I listen, the Rosen's having a phenomenal mm-hmm. year. Levine's obviously a really good player. The problem with Levine is he's been fucking injury prone his whole I career, know, basically. He'll be and um, he'll be gone. he'll be gone. He's a free agent, I think, at the end of this year, and they're not gonna sign him. Well, they probably won't because I mean he's probably going to ask for more money than we're not really getting shit. Yeah, I agree. No. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with that as well. The biggest thing with the Bulls is they they don't like they don't beat any of the top teams. Like no. they, have, I don't think they beat a top team all year. They, they haven't. They were fucking. I think as of two three nights ago, zero and seventeen against top five teams in the and the West and the East. Like so. that's actually almost impossible. <laughs> fucked up. It's fucked up, is what it is. Excuse me. I'm so done with the Bulls. I, I you know, and I, I'm that's what I'm not even gonna talk about. It. Um. All right. Cool. So, uh, listen. Uh, any any final words coming out of uh your camp? Um, for for betters going into the playoff season. You know, what do you 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 have a package? You do a monthly package. Let's talk about your package. How people can get involved with you. <laughs> where they can find you um, and, and, you know, sure. really from, from, from a gambling perspective, if they're just getting into gambling, you know, what's the best thing for them? Cause when I got into it, I had to find a couple guys too, you know? Well, I, <clears throat> I appreciate you saying that actually it's kind of I, I, I'm ironic. I, I do have guys that are in my VIP, but I want to be really specific. You might know, you might've noticed, I don't really, I don't advertise a guy. I'm not on here being like, Oh, 50 bucks a month. Come be yeah. on my V. It's not right. like that at all for me. Um, this is how it happened organically. Like years ago, I did have a VIP service, um, but 
touting for me is not really something I wanted to be. I'm not looking to be a tout specifically. I like handicapping games. I make money off my own games. What was happening was I was putting plays out on Twitter and TikTok, and just like you're saying, and they win, and people go, well, what else do you got? What else do you got? Can I get on your full card? And it's like, all right, I mean, if you want. So I created a thing where it's really inexpensive. I charge I, 30 bucks a month if you want to get everything. I give you everything for 30 days, everything I'm on. And there's no pressure to stay with me. I, I, I know that if I if you do stay with me and I do it like that because I want somebody to be able to be with me more than just a week or five right. days or whatever, you know, because mm-hmm. you can see what it's all about. And right. for a couple hundred bucks, you could have the whole year if you really wanted to. I put a shit ton of money into it. I mean, money, a shit ton of time and effort into it. Um, but I don't advertise it because I'm not looking to make money off people. If somebody wants to ride along, then I'm, I'm all for it. But at the end of the day, that's that's okay if you don't um i still continue to put out free plays as well and all those free plays are off my card i take them off the card it's just that um if i have a five play card maybe i'll give two out and i keep the other three for my guys um but that that's what it's all about i don't you know i don't specifically advertise it's just like if you want to come along come along yeah there's something to be said too about not giving all those picks out to the ether you know i really believe in that um i think there's always a couple picks you know even when the guys send in the picks for us to release the card you know they might have seven picks, but they're only, you know, for the, they have their for the show and then they have their, yeah, yeah, you know, their picks, you know, so. And, and usually it, it, those for the shows hit. I mean, <laughs> you watch your shit. I mean, you've probably had an amazing run on TikTok of video plays just cashing and cashing, which is, which has grown your account. And you know, this growing a gambling specific niche account on TikTok yeah. is very difficult. Way difficult. And I, I tell you, it's probably even more hard on Twitter, for, frankly. Um, that's mm-hmm. That's been an unbelievable grind. I've been on there way longer. But yeah, yeah, there's, there's something to be said about that. Um, I just try to be genuine. Like, I'm not, I don't want to come off as like some know-it-all or like I'm not the Vegas Dave type at all. I try, I try to, if I'm not giving out a play, I want to talk about how you can become a better gambler. Whether you want to believe it or not, listen to my advice or not. I know I'm not the biggest account out there. There's guys out there with way more followers. Mm. Um, some of the shit that I hear, I don't necessarily agree with. I actually think some of it's terrible advice, but like, I'm not trying to get into like a fucking beef with anybody. Yeah, it is right. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, for sure. But that, that being said, it's kind of like, that's what you're going to get with me. I'm going to be honest. My plays, I will give you reasons why I like them. Uh, give you a breakdown. And then if you want to ride, ride, I always, my little joke at the end is, you know, if you want to you know, right, uh, you know, if you're riding along, ride along. If you want to fade me, go fuck yourself. Like, like that's how I, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like I'm, I'm putting out quality enough plays where if you yeah. do end up going against me, you're going to lose. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like, you know, those 10,000 followers that you have came from those daily video plays. It, it, it's certainly not from uh, anything else to do. You're not putting anything else out except fucking plays and winners. And, you know, you get, 40 50 likes a video i mean dude it's hard to get that so you got a good following um you know we we, we're happy to know you and happy to bring you on you know appreciate you man show every once in a while and um, yeah you know uh so thank you uh for coming on we appreciate it i I appreciate you having me on this was cool i'd be happy to do it again um we could definitely coordinate something to make it work Uh, i'm glad i was able to finally maybe we talk about this for a little while now and uh yeah we have Today, it was oh, yeah. just like, it was like, fuck it. I'm dropping everything. You're getting on. <laughs> I don't care yeah. what I'm doing. I, pre- I do appreciate that, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was, it was cool talking with you. Um, I'm actually glad that I didn't call you Paul because you look like a very, very good friend of mine. Like, it's really it's scary. Wow. I showed him, a, I showed him your video. I'm like, dude, is this you? And he's like, no, what the fuck? He could be my brother, though. You know, doppelganger in Philly or what? You have a doppel. You absolutely do. Um, All right. I'll have to show you a picture of him, dude. It's yeah, wild. No, I like that. I like that shit. 